Assalamualaikum and good day. This is part 2 video on chapter 2 on the topic of axial load. In previous video, we already look at elastic deformation of an axially loaded members. So in this video, we will look at statically determinate and statically indeterminate axially loaded members. So what is statically determinate? For statically determinate is a structure for which the internal forces can be found using equation of equilibrium. So what is the equation of equilibrium? We have the moment positive summation of moment equal to zero and then we have this direction positive summation of fx equal to zero and upward positive summation of fy equal to zero okay this is the static equilibrium equation if we can solve the unknown using static equilibrium equation it will be statically determinate structure and then for statically indeterminate, it is a structure for which the equation of equilibrium are not sufficient to find the internal forces. It occurs, for example, when we have several unknown. So we cannot solve using static equilibrium equation. And we know that structure as statically indeterminate structure other than looking at static equilibrium equation we can also determine it is either determinate or indeterminate by look at its support for example if the structure only have one support over here it is determinate structure but if it has support at both ends, it is usually indeterminate structure. So for statically indeterminate structure, where we cannot solve only using static equilibrium equation, we need to add another equation, which is equation on deformation, where the deformation will be equal to zero. If this structure, for example, have support at both ends, then it will become indeterminate structure. So you can see there are three sections. The delta T will be equal to zero. Then we can solve this equation, which equal to zero. So as I mentioned, the structure will be statically indeterminate whenever it is held by more support that are required to maintain its equilibrium. So once again, I remind you, delta total or total deformation is the total of delta A, delta B, and delta C. In this equation, it write over here, plus and plus. But you must remember, if for example, at delta P happen to be in compression, so delta A will plus with negative, okay, negative delta B. Why it is negative? Because it is in compression. So when it is in compression, the FA or PA over here will become in negative value. So you will get the delta or the deformation is lesser than its actual or original length. That is why we plus the negative delta B because it is in compression. When the structure is statically determinate, the delta total or the total deformation will have value. But if it is statically indeterminate, the value of delta total or total deformation will become zero because it is supported by several n. 
so it's already constrained and cannot deform further actually so the total deformation will be zero usually we use over here as p p a p b and p c and another important thing is p a or it's written f a over here is internal force you can see over here we have the external force is F1 but over here have FA because F1 is external force and FA is internal force okay so to use the deformation equation we need to use the internal force in order to calculate the deformation so these two diagrams is showing us the structure of statically determinate and structure of statically indeterminate as you can see over here for statically determinate we only have one support or one fixed end and then another one is free end and for statically indeterminate we have both fixed end both end is supported so for statically determinate on this diagram, when we do FBD or free body diagram, we can see we need to remove the support. So we cut it. We have over here force on P and then we need to add resultant force acting on the cutting. Okay, resultant force acting on this P. Okay. As you can see over here, it's written summation of Fy equal to Rb. Okay, so over here we put Rb resultant at for P. We use Rb because it is at B section minus. Okay, we minus with P over here because in downward direction equal to zero. So we can determine the value of Rb just only using static equilibrium equation we only have one equation and one unknown for statically indeterminate we have one equation and two unknowns for example over here when we draw free body diagram you can see we have p on downward and then we can put rb over here i put rb because it's showing it is in upward so it is positive and RA also show in positive so I assume as downward for RA also the assumption of RA and RB you can either use upward direction or downward it doesn't matter it can be in tension and also in compression you will know which one are true either it's tension or compression after you get the value either it is positive or negative if you get negative value it's mean that your direction is in the other way of the actual direction for example you can see we put rb in upward direction we can also put it in downward direction so when put in downward direction, we get summation of Fy equal to zero, negative P minus Rb equal to zero. Then we get Rb equal to negative P. Okay. So our assumption, which is Rb in downward force, should be in upward force but it is not wrong you can see we can know it is either we put it correctly or not when we get the value of rb when we have rb equal to negative b it doesn't mean we are wrong it just mean that the direction that we put is on the other way of actual direction okay we get back into this diagram you can see for FBD over here, we have this FBD. So the summation of FY is RB 
minus RP because RP is in downward direction and plus RA because we draw it in upward direction so equal to zero we cannot solve it using static equilibrium equation because we have two unknowns which are RA and RB so in order to solve statically indeterminate problems in addition to the static equation load deformation equation need to be found okay load deformation equation is delta equal to pl over ae which we already learned on the first part of the chapter 2 video you will need one additional load deformation equation for each extra support reaction the process for solving statically indeterminate problem can be identified by the following step so the first step is we need to draw the FBD so for example we look at uh, this structure over here and this structure when we have a structure to draw FBD or free body diagram we need to remove support first and then we replace the support with reaction force after we remove the support so that the structure will be free lah from any support so we call it as free body diagram the second step is not the number of unknown so we can see over here after we remove the support we have two unknown so the unknown is on this support after we remove the support we place with reaction and then over here we have another uh, unknown for example over here we have ra and then over here we have rb so we have two unknown and then the third step is write out the static equilibrium equation so after we know the unknown there are two unknown we write down the static equilibrium equation so in y direction because we only have y direction the summation of fy equal to rb minus p plus ra equal to zero and then we need to the fourth step identify how many load deformation equation are required so over here you can see we only have uh, one structure how many load deformation required we can see from previous slide it is if we have constant material constant area and constant applied force so over here we have all three we only have one load deformation equation are required so we will have delta a b equal to p a b times l a b over a a b and e a b right because it is statically indeterminate so it is equal to zero the fifth tab is write load deformation equation for each extra unknown and then the sixth step we can solve the set of equation if for example we have several parts for example over here we have several sections so this structure is fixed at both ends over here and over here so you can see we have three sections one over here the second one over here and the third one over here so we will have three deformation equation which are delta a delta b and delta c the summation or the total of delta a plus delta b and delta c will be become zero because it has support at both ends so it cannot deform in the exit direction in previous slide we learned on external load and internal load for example over here 
we have f as external load and then after we cut we get the resultant as internal load for example i put it as p over here but the actual internal load actually depend on the distance from the external load for example if you take p at this point and then p at this point the internal force will not be the same but using the principle of St. Bernard we take uniform stress which stress distribution not affected by distribution of load but by it resultant that's why when we cut we take the resultant as P as the same wherever we cut it so the principle states that the stress distribution at section far removed from point of application of concentrated forces depend on stress resultant right on stress resultant and not the actual distribution of forces so using principle of St. Bernard we will use the internal resultant force in order to calculate for our deformation and so on. So that's all the theory on chapter 2.2 under statically determinate and statically indeterminate agile loaded members. Later on, we will look at the part 3 of this chapter 2 videos where we will cover on thermal stress. And with that, thank you. Have a good day.